Welcome. Welcome to the fifth Sunday in Lent, and happy St. Patrick's Day to those here and to those at home. Please stand in body or spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts and who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We pour resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurt grow into hatred. For all these things and for our sins, only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace out of love for the whole world. God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself. And in mercy, you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Yeah. Today's responsive reading is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the twelfth chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, 
it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their, those who their love their life lose it, and those who hate, hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others say an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. I welcome the children up and the young at heart, anybody who likes the color. Good morning. <laughs> so good morning. good morning. So I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the gospel when I do the sermon, but I thought it'd be nice for you that what is today other than the fifth? What's today? Yeah, St. Patrick's Day. And what do we know about St. Patrick? Yeah, see, that's a, <laughs> that's a good one. So that's all the fork, what they call fork level stuff, you know, stuff that has brought down that uh, the Irish, um, Irish community has developed different things all about luck and leprechauns, but it all started <clears throat> with St. Saint, Saint Patrick. So it was, St. Patrick was 16 years old, and it was, it was said that <clears throat> he was not born, he was born in Britain, he wasn't from Ireland, but he was brought over to Ireland, and that's a whole different story of how he was brought over. But how, when he was there, he escaped and went back, and he learned about Jesus and God. And what he did was, he went back when he was older, and he started to teach. And what do you think he started to teach with? What does she wear? What is on her shirt? What is this? Uh, a shamrock, yeah. <clears throat> and you know what he did with the shamrock? So like we do, we talk about the Holy Trinity. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he took that shamrock and that's how he taught people of mind to try to convert them over to christianity kind of neat isn't it <clears throat> yeah and then what i have today when we leave is i have a couple pages you know it's uh something that says three and one that you can color back in your seats that that explain it and we have just a easy one that says Happy St. Patrick's Day. And we also have, when you talked about the leprechauns with the four leaf clover, so uh, a story, my, my great-grandmother 
we always, about this time when spring, as, as the clovers would start coming up, we would go out and she would say, we need to hunt for a four-leaf clover. And why would we want a four-leaf? Four because it gives luck. Right, so as the three leaves mean the Holy Trinity, to have the fourth one, it just means luck. So what I did is I printed out, who's this? Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Because I figured everybody would know Mickey Mouse. And what's he holding? Clover. Right. You know why? Because we'd be lucky to go to Disney World, right? Everybody? Yeah. So that's why we print that. So it's, that's, that's what luck means. Right. Right. So that's why we think today of St. Patrick as a saint and uh, with the three-leaf the three leaf shamrock. So now when you see that three-leaf shamrock, you can think of St. Patrick and, and what it means and what he was trying to do with the, the Irish culture is, you know, introduce Christianity to them like we do. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here together and the children that could not be with us listening at home. Bless them as they go on this week and throughout this journey and bring us into Easter. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now we'll have to share, but you can take... Take those. <clears throat> there we go. Check that one. Another one. Another one. Another that one. And then we have this one here. And then I have crayons. Hold on. Here, a lady's out. You can come down and take whatever you want. <clears throat> now we'll have to share these. You can take one back and show them. There you go. You want to take that back? There you go. And there you go. Then we'll share them. Okay? Take some home. I'll put them in the back. Of course, I have good morning here, and I already said good morning, so just guess you can't say good morning enough. So, good morning. <laughs> so earlier I read about the Gospel of John. When the Greeks that were at the feast came up to Philip and asked to see Jesus, Philip immediately went and told Andrew that a few of the Greeks that were allowed to worship at the feast wanted to meet with Jesus. Then together they went and told Jesus, this is one of the scriptures that we, we read in our Last Supper class, along with all the journeys and miracles leading up to the betrayal. This year I play Simon Peter, one of the disciples we hear a lot about in the Bible. One might think that Philip went to Andrew, who is the older brother of Peter, because he was close with Jesus and didn't want to act alone in the introduction. Also, it doesn't really describe who these Greeks were. I have read a lot about the Greeks, that they could be from Decapolis, which is a group of cities near Galilee with a large Greek population. Given the Passover setting, some think they could have been Jewish proselytes, which are circumcised converts to the Jewish faith and who are permitted to participate in the Jewish festivals. We have discussed in class that we also think they came to Philip because of his Greek name that his father gave him after the founder of the city of Philippi, who was a great friend to the family or that he 
or that he was from Bethsaida, which is near Decapolis. The Greeks probably felt more comfortable coming to someone they thought they had more of a connection with. And I, I think this is possible in our own life. It is hard to approach a stranger and someone who may feel uncomfortable around to ask a question or want to find out what is going on. Could you imagine how scared they must have felt as an outsider to approach a couple of Jesus' closest few and request to see Jesus? But Philip and Andrew didn't hesitate to tell Jesus about their request. What we never get to know is that, did the Greeks ever get to see him? Now I'm assuming based on everything we read and know about Jesus, that there is no doubt that Jesus went and met with the Greeks. So this is where I had trouble finding a story that related to, you know, when did I feel that way you know I know it doesn't relate to someone you know wanting to see Jesus but it's just kind of like you know and it, it's, it's weird because it, it came back to when I was seven years old and I'm standing at the chain link fence that's I don't know back then they were what 12 foot high maybe even higher than that and my brother and his friends who I didn't really know were down playing baseball well I was my brother was four years older than me, and he said, please don't go beyond that chain link fence. You have to stay there to where I can see you. So I had to sit there. Well, I didn't sit there, because I don't know if many seven-year-old kids sit there, but I had to stay within that chain link, and I've always watched them play. But I was a kid that always had a stick in my hand or a bat or something like that that hit rocks or whatever I could hit, bees, you name it. You know, I hit, hit whatever I could hit. So I wanted to see, I wanted to talk to his friends. I wanted to be down there with them. I wanted to play ball. You know, I wanted to be there. What, is, what are they doing that I can't be there? Is it my age? I, I say that, but you'll find out why. Um, so two years go by, and I'm nine years old, still there because my brother's still babysitting me when, when my parents are working on or somewhere on the weekend. And they didn't have enough people to play. So they said, what about your brother? Of course, my, my brother said, no, I don't want him to play. You know, so it's a, uh, they said, well, we need somebody. So they left me play. So I get up to hit and they say, of course, nine year old, they're all 13, you know, they're teenagers now. and. You know, they figure, so they say, bring them in, and first pitch to me, bang, hit it over the center fielder's head, and run around the bases and score. So that's why I kind of realized that they all came and pat me on the back and said, wow, why were you playing with us sooner? Your brother can really hit. And that's kind of why my brother probably didn't want me to play, because I could hit the ball better than he could. So you find out a lesson there. But finally, I was invited. So it's, it's once the Greeks got invited, I was wondering, what did they say? What did Jesus say to them? What would you say when, when you finally got to that, that place where you want to, you, you got in, and we all have those stories, and I don't know if anybody wants to share a story where they were outside, you know, looking in, or, or what they would do, but um, it's, it's what we do when we get there. So it'd be neat to know exactly that part of it, but that leads me into the more serious part is in the gospel, it is not who the outsider is to request. It is what Jesus is trying to teach us that makes this gospel so important. Jesus answers with strong conviction. The hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. God has shared his glory with his son. An example of this is when we saw Jesus' glory revealed at the transfiguration. He goes on and speaks, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it, he who hates his life in this world will keep it in eternal life. 
What would most of us think that this means? Is he saying that if we are happy in our life, that we will lose it? Or those who are depressed or angry will keep it? Well, we have been taught over the years as Christians that this is not what it means. We are taught that if we center ourselves around ourselves, we will lose it because the Father will not honor this. People who live lives are about serving, even at the cost of sacrifice, will keep it because the Father will bless them with eternal life. So to be a servant is the key. It was always that way for Jesus, and it is true for all who will follow him. Like Jesus, we are expected to be faithful and a servant even up to death and trust that God will lift us up. We know this because this is why we turn to the cross. It reminds us that Jesus has died for us and reminds us of his sacrifice. In this text, even Jesus is tempted to ask his father to change his mind, to save him from his hour, from the death on the cross. I think this is where we see that Jesus experiences emotion and fear of death on the cross for just a split second because he immediately speaks but for this cause I came to this time father glorify your name then we know there was rumbling sounds of thunder and some describe as an angel's voice associated with the godly sound I am sure most didn't understand what was going on at this time but Jesus speaks This voice hasn't come for my sake, but for your sake. Jesus knew to bear much fruit, he had to die on the cross. So there's something I want to share with you. I saw this written in a sermon, and I thought, and this is, is, I have to share with you today as we talk about the lessons leading up to Jesus and dying on the cross. Of course, we will hear more about that in the, the weeks to come. Sunday with Palm Sunday and and Easter arriving. But he goes on to say that the cross frees us from sin, death, and the devil. As Martin Luther King liked to put it, it's not our hard work that frees us from these things. We are captive to sin, after all, and cannot free ourselves. It is not Jesus' teaching that frees us from these things. His teaching shows us how to live once we are free. But it doesn't free us. It is his death on the cross that frees us. As Jesus put it, now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And to do it, he will go to the cross to drive out the rulers of the world and to free us. Unless he dies on the cross, the fruit of freedom will never be born in us. The freedom of the gospel was won on the cross. Not in the miracles, not in the teaching, not even in the resurrection, but on the cross. Lord, we thank you. Amen.
let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill, especially Emily, Helen, Linda, Shirley, those with ongoing prayer needs, and those that we name before you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For what else do the people of God pray? Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that.
Please share that piece.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You can be seated. We'll uh, look at the announcements for the first time together. <laughs> um, does anybody have anything that they, they want to... You want to probably, or, or up here, you come on up here. Good morning. Uh, so, can you see me over this? <laughs> I want to thank everyone who's um, volunteering for the breakfast, and it's looking really well. Um, I wanted to make a quick announcement that um, we were going to set up early in the morning, Saturday, but I think we're going to change it to um, the afternoon. So anyone who wants to come and set up or bring their food will be there in the Yerger building at 1 o'clock, if that sounds good for everyone. It's going to be really fun. There's going to be some great food. So I want to thank everybody. So that's 1 o'clock on Saturday, March 30th. Help set up and help clean up. <laughs> appreciate you you know putting that together the easter breakfast i'm excited about it coming back and and doing that and i'm, I'm hoping that's uh that's things to come in the future with uh, you know maybe us getting back to wednesdays too where we had the the soup suppers and everybody brought some potluck and and things like that so i really appreciate you uh, bringing that back and and i can't wait to enjoy it so it's going to be busy uh, this this week. Um, you can look at the calendar if there's anything committee-wise that you, you have coming up. Uh, Sunday, we have Palm Sunday. Um, and you see on, on your bulletin that it's there's only one service on Sunday at 9 a.m. where we just distribution of the palms and the reading of the Passion. Um, Thursday, uh, Monday, Thursday, we have the Last Supper. Hope that everybody out there listening and here that can come join us. Uh, like Doug, like again, it's, it's a great brothership that we get together and, and learn everything, and it's uh, great that we can bring that to you. Uh, so we hope that you can make it. Uh, Friday, uh, hope that you all can definitely make it. Good Friday. The Tenebrae service to me, that 730 service is phenomenal. Best service that we, I think we have sometimes the, the least attended. So shout out to everybody listening and everybody there. If you really, I know there's a lot going on and we, we're here at the church and, and uh, most of us are gonna be here practicing on Monday. The choir's gonna be here Tuesday. The Last Supper's gonna be here Wednesday and we have Thursday and, and then we're back here Friday again, which is a, a pretty busy week for everybody. But uh, that service is so, so meaningful and, and great. So I hope that everyone can come out and attend. And then again, Sunday we have Easter with uh, the 8.30 a.m. breakfast, um, and hopefully uh, we can enjoy, have the Easter egg hunt at 9.30 with the kids, and then the 10 a.m. communion service. So it's only one service that day. So I think that's it. Um, unless uh, we do have in there, I guess we talked about this last week, the Upper Bucks Lutheran Cluster. Uh, at the Iron Pig Sunday, June 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Limited seats are available, uh, $20 uh, for each church. Um, and it will feature group seating, picnic, and you can read. Tickets are $30 a person. Please contact the church if you're interested. Barb, I guess that's you. Um, so, anything else? So let's stand as we sing our uh, sending hymn. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy. 
fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God.